Okay. Um. You know how uh, when some of the pro, like the Nikon ambassadors and some of these Fuji folks uh, get their hands on a new camera? Uh, you know what a sample pick is good for from a new lens or a new camera? Not much. Uh, all the shots are heavily edited. They're tweaked to the daylights. They'll add in-camera sharpening. It's like, well, it's straight out of camera. It's like, yeah, but you added sharpening. You added active delighting. None of these things actually mean anything. You know, Nikon's own ambassador, as I found a little, me and uh, I'm the one that found it, a scandal several months ago. We're caught heavily editing shots, and uh, they use those as proof of uh, a lens's output. But it was not the lens. It was Photoshop and Lightroom. Um, everybody's doing this, except these people are providing these as proof of a camera. Um, I'll point out the fact to you that you can't trust sample shots from anybody that is directly or subsidiarily connected to the camera company. You, you can't. Ask for straight out of camera, raw files under JPEGs. Uh, and very few people provide those. And the people that are connected with the companies they they don't they don't do you know it's like here's the images from so and so new camera no they don't provide you what comes even if they do provide you what comes out of camera they're heavily tweaked in camera uh, so that's technically still straight out of camera but you know the images are not to be trusted um, it doesn't validate anything if you want to know about any lens if it's been out there for a little while uh, check out the Flickr group and look at like hundreds of shots and what you'll see is you'll see a thread that runs through all, even, you know, everybody edits their own shots. Some people don't edit them at all. But what you will see is that you will see common threads running through all of those pictures. Common threads. Bokeh threads running through all those pictures. Uh, resolution, not so much, because that could be tweaked very, very easily. But you'll also see very common characteristics of the rendering of that lens. No matter, you'll see it. You know, it's, it's uh, very apparent. Um, there's a lot of things that people can't hide and things that people don't look for. And when you get a large sample variation like that, what that does is it gives you an incredibly high indicator of what the camera is capable of. That's why every new camera that comes out is like, well, we saw sample pictures from, you know, the ambassadors for these companies, whether that be, you know, uh, shooters directly or basically affiliated with uh, Fujifilm or Nikon, or Canon, or Sony, and those images are not to be trusted. So a lot of people harp on sample pics, like, wow, that's beautiful. It's like, really? Also, two people have no idea, as far as their ability to differentiate out a beautiful uh, image or composition from the actual technical rendering of the camera, whether and or the lens, obviously. A great deal of it depends on the lens, but we're also talking about noise reduction. Et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. And people run the images through noise reduction software. It's like, here's the image at incredibly high ISO. Yeah, but they didn't tell you that they sent it through a noise reduction engine in Photoshop. They don't tell you that stuff. Um, so the sample pics are not telling of anything. And people uh, look at beautiful, that's wow, that's a beautiful photograph. You know, Nikon or Sony and uh, Fuji and Canon, they don't, you know, they don't post up images of crappy shots that I was like, well, here's a beautiful, a technically beautiful shot of something insanely boring. That would make someone, even if the shot is technically brilliant, it could be compositionally ugly. It's like, well, here's a footprint in a mud puddle, you know, it's like, wow. If someone actually knows what to look for, it's like, wow, this is a technically brilliant shot at high ISO. The uh, dynamic range is incredible between all the tones of mud. But the common, excuse me for saying this, but it's true, but the common dummy, <laughs> the common dummy will say, well, that's a boring shot. You know, it's just, you know, that's, I don't want to buy this camera because that's a crappy shot. It's actually a technically brilliant shot. Um, but it doesn't move someone to buy the camera. So the opposite end of that is you have to be able to differentiate out a technically brilliant shot via dynamic range uh, when it comes to lenses and or cameras or a combination thereof, intertonal value, micro contrast, yada, 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 so on and so forth, and uh, what is compositionally beautiful. Because you could, 
You could take a crappy camera and a crappy lens, and if you put it in the hands of a master and they take a beautiful composition, I mean, it could be a technically crappy shot. Um, and uh, but uh, compositionally and to the eye, to the uh, the common uh, goof that's looking, at, wow, that's a brilliant image. It's so moving. It's beautiful. Makes me want to buy that camera. See, people, you know, obviously photography is an art form, but. People need to have their foot in both the art and the technical. They need to say, well, this is a technically brilliant image, even if I don't like the image. You have to look at what the camera and or lens or both can do and differentiate out that from the composition or the true beauty of the shot because dynamic range is important. You know, what you do with the camera is your own doing, but do not judge purchasing a lens or a camera, which is what most people do based upon a beautiful image because a beautiful image doesn't mean jack crap about uh, whether the lens is technically good or not and or the lens and camera that's a huge mistake everybody makes and it's just a, it's a type of false advertising that runs throughout uh, all forms of marketing I mean it doesn't matter if you're buying a car you know they stick some sexy broad behind the wheel of a car it's like wow that's hot that makes you want to buy that car you know, the car could be a turd muffin right it's like, wow, they stuck a sexy model behind the wheel. That makes you want to buy that car. Now it makes a moron want to buy the car. But, I mean, that's what most people are, isn't it? Let's be honest. Isn't that true? Oh, my God, I shouldn't have said that. Or shouldn't I have? I mean, isn't it true? You know? So what's that saying from P.T. Barnum, a sucker's born every minute? Um... It's about seeing what the camera and or lens are capable of doing, and you should not base anything upon the composition and beauty of a sample picture uh, from somebody that works or is an affiliate of a company because it doesn't mean anything. Not only does it not mean anything, but it also uh, is not straight out of camera. 99 out of 100 times is definitely not straight out of camera. So please uh, remember to... Uh, Keep that in mind when, you know, these new camera reviews start rolling out from people that are connected with companies. Bad idea. Yeah, slightly bad idea. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.